Hello princesses and welcome back to Not Fit for Print Beauty with me, Rebecca. Today we're going to be looking at a new concealer from Lancome. This is the Lancome Taunt et Dole Full Coverage Concealer. Um, and this video is courtesy of a conversation I had over DM with a community member here on the channel, Screaming 60s. She asked if I was picking it up and we started chatting about it. It piqued my interest. You don't have to pull my arm too much, twist my arm, I should say, too much, because you know I picked them up, and she and I have been discussing them in shades and all that. So this comes out of our discussion. Thank you so much, Screaming 60s, um, for influencing and for uh, giving birth to this video, really. Okay, so I want to talk about this new Lancome product, but I also want to talk about some of my other favorite concealers uh, at the moment and some that I hear you guys rave about a lot. Now, concealers are super personal. Um, what one person loves as a concealer, another will hate. That's just how they are. They all claim to be full coverage. It's kind of funny when you look up concealers. There's not, there's no real concealers out there that say light coverage the way we see with foundations. Because I suppose with a concealer, the idea is they conceal or hide. And I can't imagine anybody requesting one that doesn't. You know, I, I need a concealer that does not hide my dark circles under my eyes. I'd like a concealer that lets my blemishes so, show through. You don't really hear that. So they all claim to be full coverage. But even though they say that, they all come in a different variety of texture. So to me, concealer is about the, the texture more than the promise. Same way that setting powder is. You're never going to find a setting powder that doesn't claim to blur pores, and yet not all of them do, right? Okay, so knowing that this is a little bit of a personal issue, um, I, I'm just going to give you my recommendation, and you can see what else I like, and it might let you know, okay? So the cool thing about these, and I got this in two shades. So I got a lighter shade to go under the eyes. That would be 215 in buff neutral. And then I got the 260 in bisque neutral for the rest of my face. Um, and there's where the recommendation lies. So this is, I'm going to show you what this reminds me of too. This is an interesting concealer. It's got a really nice grip there and it's got a nice big doe foot. Okay, so why the huge doe foot applicator when compared to other concealers? Well, this becomes a really great concealer to wear on your I hate to say it because it's so commonly used, but your no makeup, makeup days. You know when you just want a little touch up on the blemishes or just under the eyes or for me around the nose, I get red there from allergies, that kind of thing. The nice big doe foot applicator and actually the big, it's kind of a big concealer. I'll show you when we compare it to some others. It's kind of a bigger, thicker bottle. Um, can really work for that and apply it in a bigger space. You can use the tip of the doe foot just to get under the eyes, but you also have the larger part of the wand where you can get more of your face. So it's really great for that. It is full coverage. It does wear well, um, but it also spreads really it's kind of got a more a thinner consistency. If you would like a thinner consistency concealer, and I do, not thinner coverage, thinner consistency, th I like this one. It lays nice um, just on the skin or over foundation. I actually think it's really good, and I found the shade choices. So let's talk about price and such. There's 20 shades. They're $29 each, which for a high-end um, slash luxury concealer isn't bad. Remember, we're talking about high-end products here. Um, not bad at all. Um, and I found the uh, shade choices. I know Screaming 60s was telling me in the DMs that she had some trouble and maybe made some of the right, some of the wrong choices. And she was in the process of exchanging. I kind of got lucky, but I do do this a lot, I suppose. Um, and I think it worked. We're going to apply it together. But I, before we go into looking at this one, because this is the new one on the block, I also want to tell you some of my other recommendations. And that will give you an idea also if you'd like these, because I'll compare it. This really, really, really first off reminds me of the Dior Forever Skin Correct Concealer. Do you remember this one from a few seasons back? They are very similar in their glass square packaging. They are very similar in their large doe foot applicator. Although the grip on this one isn't as good when you pull it out. It's not as airtight. The Dior is not as airtight as the Lancome. The Dior is $36, so a lot, hefty amount more. Um, and I actually like the Lancome better. But if you liked 
the Dior Forever Skin Correct and you might be running out, try this one instead. I like it just a smidge more actually. And if you're going to use this all over your face for a no makeup makeup kind of look, just buy the shade for your skin. Don't get a lighter one for under the eyes if you're not going with a full look and just use it everywhere that you need it in the shade of your skin and it will be absolutely beautiful. But if you like the Dior Forever Skin, you'll like this one. Okay, here's here's a concealer that you guys love and I don't and I'll tell you why and that will also give you some reference on the new Lancome. Pat McGrath Sublime Perfection Full Coverage uh, Concealer. You guys love it, I don't. This is a very thick full coverage concealer. I am not familiar with the word moderation. I believe I've heard it once before, but I am not familiar with it in usage. And so this one always cakes on me. If I put this under my eyes, it will cause creasing. It will look cakey. You guys love this. I hear so much how much you guys love this. To me, this is too thick. I threw it in here. Let's see, there's 35 shades of this and it's $32 each. And I got light medium eight and light medium 11. So I have two shades in it. It's just not my favorite. I just think it's too thick. And if this is your favorite, then you might not like the Lancome. I'm giving you some comparison so you'll know. By the way, just to reverse for a moment here, um, the Dior comes in 28 shades and was $36. So uh, Pat McGrath, 35 shades, $32, too thick for me, but you might love it. Let me also throw in a plug for something that's not necessarily a concealer, but the NARS Radiant Creamy Liquid Color Correct um, comes in four shades for $30 each. If you need a color corrector, just this is not a color corrector video, it's a concealer video, but I have it out here and I just am in love with it. If you need a color corrector, just say it. Okay, on with concealers. Here's another one I love. I do not like Pat McGrath, but I do love Giorgio Armani Power Fabric Concealer. Why did I bring up Pat McGrath in the same sentence? The Pat McGrath is thick, is too thick as the Giorgio Armani Power Fabric is too thin and spreadable. They all claim to be full coverage, but I find the Giorgio Armani to be so spreadable, so smooth, probably my go-to favorite concealer. If I had to pick one, I like a lot of my concealers, but if I had to pick one, it would pretty much be this Giorgio Armani Power Fabric. It comes in 20 shades, it's $34 each. I generally use shade five, but I have found myself using like shade 3.5 and four and not noticing. Of course, you know, I am one that will walk around town with two different eye looks from a video and no one notices. So maybe you shouldn't take me for my work, but I'm just saying, um, if I have to grab a concealer that I know will always work in a variety of shades, to be frank, it's always this one. It's just a real go-to for me. Um, but this Lancome is actually a close second, and I wouldn't wear the Armani all over the face for a no makeup look. It's just for dotting, and you know, it's got like a much more, a much smaller tube, a much smaller doe foot. I mean, that doe foot is itty bitty compared to the large fat doe foot on the new Lancome product. So this is really just a spot concealer, but I think it's a really good one. Um, I also really love the Clinique Even Better Concealer Eraser. I, that comes in 32 shades. It's $27. I buy shade CM52. I haven't repurchased. I don't know if you can see here, but you can see through it. This is pretty much used up, but it's a really nice little concealer. It's got a little spreader thingy, little sponge on the end that I've never used, but um, it's just a really nice concealer, really kind of thin and watery, which sounds like a put down, uh, but for me, that's a positive. I give it a choice between the Clinique and the Power Fabric Giorgio Armani. I will always pick the Giorgio Armani, but this again is a nice, easily layerable, spreadable one. So I wanted to mention it to you. Um, if you're looking to change it up from the Armani, this Clinique would be a good one. I will link all these below. Um, if you are looking to change it up from the Pat McGrath, I don't know what to do for you. I just don't like these thick ones. A lot of people do. And last but not least, let me give a plug for the super cool Jones Road face pencil. Hey, speaking of Jones Road, to all of my princesses in the United Kingdom, I got an email that Jones Road 
which is Bobby Brown's new label, is now being sold in Great Britain and the UK. So if you are interested in it, just thought I would tell you that. I can give you more information below if you want that, but you guys have been asking me. So in the UK, it looks like you can get these now. These are really cool. I have a video on them that I'll link below because they're slightly tricky to use. I have shades eight and 10, but it comes in 25 shades and they're 25 bucks a piece, which is, expensive I know uh, for this little stick it's a sharpenable stick they're super cool though you just like put moisturizer on your face unless you just kind of have an oily complexion to begin with and you just kind of dot this in and then rub it with your hand or with a brush and it just kind of spreads out and becomes this skin like foundation slash concealer they're just super cool. I'm continually impressed by these ever since I've made the video on them. I like them a lot. So I wanted to put them in this video. Whereas I have been comparing concealer to concealer, I can't really compare these to anything. I know there are other pencil concealers. This is different. These need to be kind of put over a moisturizer and they're just really pretty and really nice and totally impressive and unique. So I wanted to throw those in. I hope that in giving you, those are my current favorites, except for the Pat McGrath is one of your favorites, not mine. Um, but those are my current favorites in there. And I do like these kind of thin layerable concealers. This is a really good one. I would put this up there with my Giorgio Armani favorite, to be honest with you, and above the Dior. So that gives you an idea of if you will like this. I'm just kind of trying to relate it to other products because concealers are so personal. What I want to do now is I just kind of want to show you how this applies. So I'm going to come back, go back in time really, to when I had just foundation on and I was at the concealer point in my makeup application just to show you how this works. So stay right there. Okay, let's get to concealing. Let me tell you what I have on. And let me show you our guest stars for today. All sorts of good stuff. Okay, so right now I have on the Melt New uh, Foils, we'll just call them, uh, in the Peaches and Cream, and then my little Tarte Hydroflex that you guys are going to have to fly over to Los Angeles and pry out of my hands because I use it so much I need to stop. And our guest stars for putting on the concealer today will be brushes from the Sonia G Lotus Limited Edition and the brand new Fusion, which is, these are both made for Power, uh, for, I'm sorry, for cream and liquid products. Okay, so we've got a lot to cover up here and I've got two shades of this new Lancome concealer. I'm gonna use the lighter shade, which for me is 215, which is buff neutral under the eyes. And then we're going to use the 260, which is bisque neutral for the rest of the face. We've got some particular problem areas today, including for my allergies, I've got really dry kind of peely skin around my nose, which is always attractive. And we had a very lucky, quick and well-fed mosquito who has given me a mosquito bite. I don't know if you could see it because I do have some foundation on, but a mosquito bite in the middle of my forehead, the sneaky little devil. Why did it choose my forehead? Because it knew I was filming today. I don't care. Okay, so let's start with our lighter shade and we're, I'm gonna describe how this works for you and you know. So we're gonna put it right here because this is where I get a little bit of darkness because I don't sleep well. Imagine that. Just there, and then we're gonna use this Fusion kind of uh, concealer brush right there, just to kind of blend it in. Now this is very light, uh, and I, you're seeing how well it works. That's mostly due to the, to the brush, but also this really glides very, very nicely onto the skin. It's nice and just a little bit too light, which makes for a nice base. Um, you know, it kind of goes in and out of style in the makeup community if we're doing brighter under eyes or the same shade. Lately, I kind of do the same shade throughout rather than the brightening lighter shade underneath, but you do you. And today, I did it differently. Okay, with the other shade, now let's watch how this conceals. I don't know if this horrible mosquito bite is showing or not. I kind of hope it is so we can see if we can get it covered up there and around the nose here where it is peeling, my goodness, and just various other things. I have some, some visible veins. They're not lifted up, but they just kind of show. And I have a blue pencil mark from when I was in seventh grade, which if you don't live in the United States is about what, 13, 12, 13 years old, and I poked myself in the head with a lead pencil and gave myself a little tattoo. It's been there forever. 
It was an accident. Okay. So now I'm going to use this base brush to just kind of, as you see, just gently spread this all over. And it blends in really well. I am such a neutral skin shade. Now it's not gonna perfectly cover the kind of peely dry skin around my nose. That's my personal uh, constant issue for me because I do have allergies and dry skin around my nose because of it. But as you see, that blends in beautifully and really does kind of brighten up my face, which had a lot of just little imperfections like we all do. Let me get the rest of my makeup on and then we're gonna talk a little bit about this. Stay right there. Okay, that's a little bit better. I'm a little bit more finished there. I think the takeaway from this little experiment is that there's a lot of really good concealers out there. and It's kind of a personal choice. If you like a nice big doe foot, if you like to occasionally do the no makeup look where you're kind of just wearing concealer on little imperfections, um, you could do a lighter and then a skin colored shade and really have a really nice, you know, actually just the skin shade that matches your skin, maybe all over. If you just kind of want to do some spot touch ups and have a no makeup look, this is a really nice, it's a nice coverage. It spreads evenly. I find it easier to work with because it does not cake. It wears beautifully and lasts quite a long time. It definitely is going to get my seal of approval. But like I said, concealers are very personal. So I would love to know what you're liking. To me, concealers kind of work best when they're put into a category. Longer wearing, bigger doe foot, um, consistency. You can't really talk about coverage because they're all full coverage. You know how that goes. We discussed it. So definitely leave me a comment for what your favorites are. And if you have tried this one or even heard about it, it was quite a bit of a quiet release. So uh, do let me know in the comments below and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, which I sure hope that you did. And if you haven't already done so, I do hope that you subscribe to my channel and I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.